All right, awesome. So um, if you are on the call, just mute yourself until you're ready to talk, just so we don't get any background noise. I am super excited today because we're going to have a little bit of a different conversation. And by the way, um, I'm going to be looking for more of you that are part of our group, either within EXP Family Tree or within the Growth Collaborative, who are having success in different areas, to come on and share what you're doing, because it's so much more relatable when we're just talking to each other and each person in different parts of the country and, uh, you know, different niches of business are having success because we can find our own success in those stories. And oftentimes we can just get a lot of inspiration from each other. And um, so if I haven't asked you to do that yet, it's not because I don't want you to. Uh, sometimes I don't know exactly what you'd feel comfortable talking about. So please work chat me and let's make it part of our future um, schedule. Uh, I know Jen, uh, a partner of mine has come on and talked about her best practices on TikTok. We'll get her back to do that again. Uh, Sharon, of course, comes on and talks about operations every month. So uh, some of you are already participating, but it is open to everyone and we all have gifts and strengths and skill sets to share. So no one uh, doesn't have something that can bring value to somebody else. And that is the plain truth. So um, today I'm excited to talk uh, with Matthew. Matthew is a new partner of mine in North Carolina. And um, like brand new to real estate, brand new partner to EXP. How long have you been licensed, Matthew? Uh, almost three months, but I've I quit my job about two months ago, so I've only actually been doing things for two months. <laughs> So. Awesome. And, you know, when I first spoke with Matthew, he said, you know, I don't have an option to fail. I'm quitting my job. I need to take care of my family. This is what I'm going to do. Do you think I can do it? And I said, you know, anybody can do it, but it's really going to take a lot of effort and action. And if you're doing it full time and you treat it like a full time job, you're going to get results. And, um, you know, I truly believe that I fundamentally believe it. It's what I did when I started in real estate and what's what I've seen a lot of people do. You know, but one of the things you guys have heard me talk about as a coach uh, oftentimes is oftentimes we know what to do, but we can't get ourselves to actually do it and we can't get ourselves to do it consistently. So it's not always a lack of knowledge or resources, although when we're new, we do need that too. It is just really being able to get ourselves to get into action, having a strong motivation, having a strong why, but also uh, being able to fight through some of the uncomfortable feelings and fear. If anybody hasn't watched my YouTube uh, video, it's just a short video on procrastination, or you can find it on Instagram, I think too. There's been a lot of research done about procrastination, and it's not like we all have been taught in the past that if we're not good at time management or we're not good at priority management, we're going to procrastinate. Actually, if we look into the way our brain works, the reason many of us procrastinate is because we're trying to regulate our mood and our emotions. And when we don't want to do something, it's because it's going to make our mood or um, not you know, not something positive, or it's going to create a not positive uh, emotion in us. And so that part of our brain is going to try to get us to um, get away from it as fast as possible. And so oftentimes what we do is we train our brain uh, subconsciously because we'll procrastinate the thing that's not going to make us feel good. It might be scary. It might be uncomfortable. We might be afraid of something. It just, it just doesn't make us feel good. It's something we know we need to do, but that emotion and mood regulation will take over. What we'll actually do is we'll go replace it with something we like to do in business. So now we're training our brain that when we don't do the things that we don't like to do, we get to do the things we like to do. And then we actually create more procrastination. And so when we can understand how our brain works, we can actually use it to our advantage. And so take a watch um, uh, on my Instagram or on my YouTube of that. And if it resonates with you or you want to talk through it, I'm always here to do that. But it was a huge aha for me. And there's some really interesting hacks that you can uh, put in play both in your calendar as well as just in some of the words you use that can help you get into action. And that's what I think of when I think of Matthew is action. And that's why he's getting the results he's getting. So we're going to talk about two things today. But before we get into that, Matthew, please do a short introduction of yourself. Obviously, we know you've been in business for three months now. What were you doing before? Tell us just a little bit about yourself personally and professionally. Yeah, so I am 30 years old. This is a second career for me. Um, I have been an ICU nurse for the past six years, uh, worked in the cardiovascular ICU, neuro ICU, every ICU you can name of. And I've traveled around the country, worked in uh, Connecticut, at Yale. I've been all over Charlotte area, North Carolina, Winston-Salem area. So um, this is completely different than anything I'm used to doing, but it's also um, rewarding in its own way. And it's something that I've become passionate about and I'm really excited to just be involved in it, so. Awesome, and you have a family. 
I do. I am married to my wife, Hannah, and we have a daughter who is, I'm going to say 1.5 and everybody laughs at that because it's easier than saying, you know, 18 months or whatever. <laughs> he's, Try to he's count the months. <laughs> so, yeah. I love um, it. And she is also a nurse. So um, we're a healthcare family, I guess you could say. Now we have transitioned to real estate and I'm a real estate broker, but also an investor too on the side. So so entrepreneurship is now uh, entering your family legacy and you have really embraced it. Um, you know, I could tell at the very beginning, you were very methodical. You wanted to know as much as possible, but if you knew the information, you were going to take that information and do something with it. And so one thing that Matthew has done that I think has really helped him, and we're going to let him talk a little bit about this. And if you want more information, all you have to do is work chat me. It's available to all of you is that he has joined what is called the rockstar agent coaching and training program that Rich Thomas me along with some of us have put together. You can hear all about it in the EXP family tree. They've done tons of live streams about it. I believe it's $96 a month, Matthew. Yes. $96 a month. You just do it month to month. And so if it works for you, great. You can keep going. If it doesn't, you don't have to. It doesn't take many sales to get a return on your investment of $96 a month. And uh, it has tremendous resources, scripts, uh, plug and play presentations, um, flyers, as well as, of course, a lot of training and coaching. But one of the things that you mentioned to me, Matthew, that helps you a lot is it really just breaks it down for you. What do I have to do in activities to make the money I need to make in real estate? Because that sometimes is fuzzy for people, not only new agents, but just agents in general. And knowledge is power. So let's talk a little bit about that. How has that program helped you to kind of connect those dots and then hold yourself accountable to doing those activities? Yeah. So starting out, I think I, like the first month, I spent a lot of time doing training videos. You know, EXP has so much training. There's so many coaching, so many th different things you can do that can consume a lot of time. And I think in my mind, I was thinking, okay, well, if I watch these videos, I'll be closer to making money. Well, that's not really how it works. You have to get out there and do things. And Rockstar Agents, which was recommended by Carrie and also my mentor, Patsy, um, it's just something that kind of helped focus my my energy and what I was doing. So for me, I spent a lot of time on the videos when I, which is good for education, but you should also be doing what's called dollar productive activity. And that's what Rockstar Agent focuses on. Um, and they really just like, designed this fantastic point system and it just makes a lot of sense it's very simple um and, and you, you talk about i guess like where you want to be in your business the type of um i guess the amount of money you want to make and then it kind of breaks it down well this is how many points you need to earn so you know the dollar productive activity you know it, it can be door knocking which is what i do um which is what easy for me but you know some people are good at you know making phone calls or writing letters and all of these things have different point values associated with them so knocking on a door is two points so you know i know how many points i need to make for the week to expect the income that i want to make so i have to hit that many doors so it's just really a little bit of math but um even more so than that you know it it puts you in a group of people now and you can see how everyone's getting their points and and i'm kind of a competitive person so you know, when I see it, I'm like, okay, well, this person got, you know, 20 points today. Like, how can I go get points today? What can I do? How many real estate conversations can I have? How many doors can I knock? How many letters can I send? How many phone calls can I make? And those are things I was not doing before I got in this group, which makes complete sense now. So it's been extremely beneficial to me. Um, it's helping guide me in that right direction. And, and on top of all of that, there's coaching calls, there's training videos, there's just so many resources involved with it. And they really do have some great masterminds and some great coaching calls that I've been a part of. It's been very, very um, eye-opening for me as a new agent. So I've gotten a lot of value out of it. Well, well worth the $97 or $96. Yeah, 96 That's right. And by the way, there are a lot of top, top producing agents doing it as well. It's not just new agents. So the cool thing is it's really creating just synergy among anybody that just wants to increase their productivity. That's it. It's really, if you're not doing as much as you want to be doing, put yourself in a group of people that want to be doing more and it's going to rub off and you're going to learn and you're going to have a little competitive nature in you. And then you're going to have the focus. So what I heard you say, Matthew, is what it did is it reminds you every day, I need to go get points. And you're associating the points with, I need to have real estate conversations. We all know that uh, real estate is a contact sport. 
However, we get busy in our days doing all the things. And then we go day by day and go, oh, I didn't actually talk to anybody about real estate for three days because we don't have something that's bringing it to the forefront of our mind all of the time. And there's a lot of things that can distract us. So when you're working in something like this, it literally is reminding you all the time that other people are doing those things. You should do them. And it also gives you some certainty. If you're not sure exactly what activities are going to equate to what income, it gives you a little bit of that certainty. They've actually used this program with large brokerages and teams teams and they've been able to take this data and come up with this point system and it's actually showing a tremendous amount of results and has in the past so this isn't something that hasn't been proven before so if you're not doing the production level that you want to it might be for you it's not going to be for everyone but it's been awesome to see Matthew embrace it and really take advantage of it. So now let's get into the door knocking because this is the kind of main path that you've chosen as a brand new agent to get your point, so to speak, and to get into those um, conversations. You're also doing some open houses, right? So you do door knocking around that as well. So let's just talk a little bit about how did you decide on door knocking? Why did you decide on it? And then let's just talk a little bit about maybe if you can think about it, how has that evolved? Like, how did you start? And then how has it gone over the last few months because you've had some great success. Well, I've learned a ton about myself and, and what works and what doesn't work. And, um, you know, I think initially starting out, um, everyone said, you know, contact your sphere of influence. Well, I did that in about three days. So, you know, <laughs> after that, you know, what do you do after that? So it's like, I can't, you know, I, I didn't want to wait around for my sphere of influence to buy a home or sell a home. So, you know, it, it didn't make a lot of sense for me to, to not do something else. So door knocking just seemed like it was you know, a way that I could get points is something that I can actually have face-to-face -face contact with people, which I value. And I know that some people really value that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I think my goal initially was to host an open house every weekend. Um, and I would kind of select an open house based off of like, you know, is it a decent sized neighborhood? Um, is there traffic flow nearby? Is it near like a main city? You know, obviously you try to pick like an ideal neighborhood. Um, but once I selected one, I would just reach out to the agent and say, hey, like I'm interested in hosting an open house for you. Is that something, you know, your, your client would be into? And, and they say yes or no. And, and most people will say yes. You know, they want you to get out there and help market their property because ho hopefully you can bring them a buyer. But um, one of the things that I do when I get that open house opportunity um, I print out flyers that say open house with my information on it, you know, letting them know like, uh, hey, like I am a buyer's agent in this transaction and I go around the neighborhood and I try to hit at least every door in the neighborhood depending on how big it is <laughs> I've actually had some that are you know over 200 houses big so you know I, I try to hit most of them but um, it's, it's been really easy to walk up to a door with a flyer that says open house Sunday two to four my name's Matt do you know anyone who's interested in buying a home in your area and you know that's just kind of the the intro and then they can say yes or no and it just kind of depends on Know who they are and how receptive they are to knocking on their door but um, I've had a lot of great responses and a lot of um, great conversations and I've been able to generate some pretty decent leads out of it I feel like so yeah and so um so to, let's talk about a couple things you've knocked on doors where it says it has said no solicitation and you haven't had a bad experience number one you're not soliciting you're sharing right. information so that's your mindset <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about that because that's a mindset thing for a lot of people. They get nervous about that. So tell me your perspective on that and some of the responses you've received. Yeah, so it's funny because I've, I've gotten some mixed reviews and you know I talked to my broker in charge about it and I think it, it's all about how you um, introduce yourself and and what you're providing. I mean, if you're if you're not selling anything and you're not like I don't, don't want to quote any laws or anything, but I think that as long as you're providing information and not like harassing them to make a sale it, there is completely different so you know i knock on doors and i say hey i just wanted to stop by and you know let you know there's an open house in your neighborhood and some people you know were like hey this is no soliciting and, and, and it's going to happen yeah. um and you say hey like i'm not soliciting i just wanted you to be aware that it's a great opportunity to if you have any friends or family that are looking to move to the area it's a great you know opportunity to bring them closer if you like and you know i wouldn't recommend leaving anything on their doorstep or anything like that right. if they have a sign that says no soliciting um but i've actually i've actually got three clients that were no soliciting neighborhoods and no soliciting you know big sign on the door i um, mean do not knock and i was like well i mean the worst thing they can say is no right so you, you just knock it and see what happens and i've actually like i said i've had some great conversations with people and one, one of the latest uh, buyer clients that i'm trying to work with now um was one of those like no, no soliciting on the 
very front of the neighborhood and on the door. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to meet you. And because I've been trying to reach out and everything seems so automated and not realistic. And I'm just happy to meet someone in person and talk to you. So that was, that a, was a, such yeah. a great story, you guys, because this person is like trying to talk to realtors, trying to find information online, is overwhelmed with it and has no solicitation on her door. And then Matthew knocks and she's like, thank you for knocking on my door, you know? So it's all a matter of perspective. Um, and if you aren't trying to sell them on something in that moment, you would technically are not soliciting again, not, you know, check with your own broker if you're nervous about that. And you don't have to do this. What I'm trying to tell people is though, we can let our minds play a lot of tricks on us by saying like, this is a reason I'm not going to knock. This is another reason I'm not going to knock. You know, this is another reason people can think this and that. And at the end of the day, if you're just confident that you're here to bring somebody something of value and you believe it could possibly help them, you can override a lot of those limiting beliefs in your mind and you can help people because there are people out there that need to be helped. So let's talk about some numbers because you are knocking on about 200 doors a week. Is that your point system right now, Matthew? Yeah, so I'm supposed to get about 468 points, and if, if I do 200 doors, I just kind of set that as a number. That'll get me to the 400-point mark, and hopefully within 400 doors, I'll have real estate conversations that will get me over that, that point mark that I'm looking for. But um, I've been I've been doing 200 doors a week for a little over a month now, so I'm right at 800 doors in, um, and I, I kind of just talking with my wife about it. And I was like, look, you know, it's, it's gotta be a numbers game. It's gotta be all about, you know, how many contacts I make. So, you know, at this rate within a year, hypothetically, if it doesn't rain or snow, I should hit about 10,000 doors. So that's the goal. Um, and, and each one of these doors, if they don't have a no soliciting sign, I try to leave a flyer. So, you know, hopefully it would be great if I could actually contact face-to-face 10,000 people, but you know, half, half don't answer or 75% don't answer. So I at least leave a flyer. So, that's, that's been the goal, um, to 200 doors a week. So, so out of those 200 doors a week for a month, 800 doors total, talk to us a little bit about your leads, your pipeline, your possible clients, et cetera. Yeah. So the, so when I, when I started out the, the 200 doors, um, my first weekend doing it, um, a lot of people answered the door, but I was just not prepared to have the conversation. So I just learned a lot about what I'm saying and like my goal for that conversation, like, mm -hmm. Initially, it was like, hey, here's an, here's a flyer for an open house. And I was like, bye. You know, I didn't, didn't even <laughs> I didn't really even try to gain contact information. I was just I wasn't really knocking with intent, I think. And and now um, now that I'm in, you know, the different mindset and understanding, like it's more than just here's an open house flyer. It's like, how can I help bring you value? So I've been offering to do CMAs, um, you know, trying to stay in touch with people and reach back out to them. So as far as. Um, you know, contact numbers. I think it really just depends on the neighborhood. Um, yeah. I have some situations where, and, and I'll say this just based off of my experience, the older neighborhoods like built in the 90s um, or 80s typically have an older population. Um, the people that live there are a little older and I've they've been more receptive to the door knocking and they're easier to talk to, I feel like. Um, so with those neighborhoods, I'm um, actually... This past week, I knocked 200 doors, and I got five different people's numbers, which doesn't sound like a lot of numbers, but out of it's these a five, lot. well, I mean, but out of these five, two yeah. of them are, are sellers in the next six months. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's kind of like how I put a value on it. It's like, okay, yes, I spent six hours on Saturday walking through a neighborhood. It was 95 degrees outside. It's not great, but I got two sellers. <laughs> you know, right. and it's not. I haven't sold a house yet and I haven't, uh, you know, and I, and I say that because it's more about building up this, um, like this momentum and this like pipeline yeah. opportunity to have these sales later on down the road. So, yeah. And that's what everybody has to do. We always have to be filling the pipeline, right? It's the funnel. You have to put as many in the top and then it's just like a funnel. It just keeps pushing down, pushing down. And then pretty soon you have the results coming out the other end. But if your pipeline isn't full, you're not going to have the momentum of people calling you every week. But if you do it consistently, you will have people calling you every week. And those that have done that know that that's true. And that's exactly what you're building. So five conversations and phone numbers in one day of door knocking is very, very good. Most people on this call are listening in the live stream or who will listen later. Don't set 
don't talk to two people that are looking to sell their house within six months in a day's time, much less a week's time. That's just the truth because they're not intentionally doing those activities on a regular basis. And it might be because they've got business going on and it's hard, you know, as you start getting business to maintain that, but it's critical. Um, and it might just be that they're nervous to put themselves out there uh, and do something that's uncomfortable. And that's why I think you're very inspirational because what I heard that everybody needs to hear is the first time and the first month that Matthew was door knocking, he had no idea what he was doing. And he was literally just like throwing flyers at people. But here's the thing. He could not have learned and got more comfortable doing it and gotten better at it if he wouldn't have started doing it, even when you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I remember starting in open houses. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just talking to people. I mean, I'm sure I wasn't talking to enough people. I'm sure I was saying the wrong things. It did not matter because every time I did one, I would think, oh, okay, that kind of worked. That didn't work. I didn't talk to anybody this time. I need to get more intentional. I would be thinking about what went well and what didn't go well. And that's how I got better and better and ultimately grew my business through open houses. There's no possible way if you don't start the first time that you can get to where you need to get to. So you've just got to go do it and not care that if the first month your door knocking isn't great or your calling isn't great or your open houses aren't great because that's how you learn. So let's talk a little bit about, so two possible sellers, but your pipeline is bigger than that because in the previous couple of months, you have gotten other possible sellers and buyers. Just tell us a number of like, what, what have you gotten on your plate right now that you're like, okay, these are very strong prospects of clients. Yeah. So I think realistically I have seven sellers in the next six months. Um, you guys. So and, and, I, and I, I talk about that and I say that and everybody's like, oh, that's crazy. And, and for me, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And I look at it, there's a lot of potential in what I have and nothing's happened yet, but there's so much potential. And I tell my wife, like, you know, if I keep doing this, if a third of these people actually follow through, like it's going to be more than what I was making as a nurse, like it's going to make, it makes sense. So, you know, if I keep doing this, I should be very busy in six months. Like I, that's the goal. So, um, yes. And people say within six months, and there's going to be a percentage of them that speed up that process. Yeah. They, everybody thinks it's longer than it really is. So the keeping in touch part is critical because I recall so many times and I see people nodding their heads on here, you know, um, people will say, oh, I'll be ready next year. And then like, if you're keeping in touch with them pretty soon, you're showing them houses next month. Because yeah. once people start thinking about it, it's often a reality that they start wanting to do it faster than they think. There are going to be those situations where people have to wait till a certain time or whatnot, but it does happen. So it's likely you're going to list homes sooner than six months from now. And if you continue these activities, you're going to meet somebody that says, oh my gosh, Matthew, perfect timing. We need to sell our house this month. And that right. will happen too, because again, it is a numbers game to a certain degree. Right. I think one thing that's really exciting about these potential sellers is that um, all but one have mentioned wanting to purchase a home right after they sell. Yes. So it's like, it, it's almost like a two transaction relationship immediately, because if I help them list, they automatically want to downsize. And it just so happens that the market we're in, and, and, and by downsize, I mean one level, single level homes, because they're older and they're looking for something that's easily, more easily accessible. So um, they they definitely want to sell and you know, finding out, you know, if they need to sell first before they buy or, you know, asking the right questions is really important because, you know, you could just list it and walk away, but you, know, you want to make sure you maintain that relationship because, you might need to help them buy as well. So it's, it's yeah, kind of you will. Yeah, yeah, you will. And you should. And maybe sometimes there's a temporary housing, you know, in the middle, but that's okay. And sometimes they're going to go from one right to the next. You're going to be showing them houses while you have their home listed. One thing I would suggest just as a coaching moment, and this can help everybody. And I'm sure some of you are thinking of this for Matthew as well is um, start researching single level living in your area or the areas that, you know, these people might start moving in new construction opportunities, neighborhoods. Actually, if you know that some of these people that are going to be moving are going to need that go door knock those neighborhoods and let them know. I have a seller slash buyer of a client who is going to be selling their home and is going to be needing to move to one level. So I'm actually coming out to this neighborhood to see if you have thought of selling your home anytime in the near future or within the next six months or year, because I am compiling a list of possible possibilities and possible neighborhoods for these clients that I'm going to be working with here as they get their house ready to go on the market. That's also not salesy, but rather a great value. And then if you can go back to those people that you have in your pipeline, those seven prospective sellers, let's say four of them need to downsize. And you say, Hey, I just wanted to let you know, Matthew, I've been actually out door knocking in a couple of the neighborhoods in town that are single level living uh, communities, just because I want to get to know a little bit more about those neighborhoods on your behalf, but also 
I want to start to get an idea if there's going to be some properties listed for sale in there so that when you get ready to list your home, we can show those to you as soon as possible and you can make it an easy transition. No one else will call them and do that for them. I can guarantee you. And you're already door knocking. So take this opportunity to go do that and then bring that information back to them. And you might be able to find somebody that wants to list their home, bring it to those people and they'll say, hey, let me go see it. I might list my home sooner and move into that property if it works for me. And you might actually get a transaction going faster yeah and that's and i can confirm that because i actually did that with uh one of the sellers who wants looking to downsize i went and knocked and kind of used a different script saying hey like i have a client looking to downsize and it just so happened they were looking to move so it's it was an opportunity where they you know they took some pictures of the home sent it to me and i'm that's probably going to be my first listing is within the next two months is going to be that one house that i just so happened to pull into the driveway and try a new script and it, and it worked and it was just a relationship that I built based off of what you just said, Carrie. That's amazing. So I hope you guys are taking notes because none of this is salesy or scary. All of this is coming from a place of contribution and just trying to help people. And it can all start for a very simple, hey, I'm doing an open house next door or in your neighborhood. And it just starts the conversation. Um, so let's talk a little bit about any other scripts that you've been using now. If you don't have an open house, obviously you just used one right now, which is, hey, I have a client that's looking to downsize, looking for single level living. So I'm coming around the neighborhood to see if anybody's looking to sell. Have you done anything else from a script perspective that's worked? Um, so it's, it, for me, I've only used the uh, open house and the, I have a client looking to buy a home in your area and those have worked. And actually, you know, if it's not that person, a lot of times they'll tell on their neighbor, like, I'm not looking to sell, but, but, you know, Dave is down the street and I'm like, well, tell me more about Dave. <laughs> so, you know, um, those are two of the things. One of the things that I did do um, regarding my open house script was, um, I started trying to find ways to offer to do a CMA. And yes. one of the things was, you know, people, when I hand them the open house flyer, you know, a lot of people want to know what it's listed for. It's just like curiosity because they live in the neighborhood and they're like, they see the price. And I'll say something along the lines of, yeah, this house is listed for 505. And a couple of your neighbors were surprised when I told them that and they were curious on what their home was worth. And so I offered to do a free CMA for them. Is that something you're interested in? And that line right there has just, oh, like they're thinking to themselves, oh, my neighbor's getting a CMA and they're curious. Well, I want one too, if it's free. And I mean, of course it's free because I'm getting your information, but um, you know, they, they're just like, oh, I want to know. So, you know, hypothetically, if, if they do intend to sell or want to sell soon, you'll have their information. And if not, you have their contact information for five years down the road. So, yeah. And, and you know what, as a new agent or any agent, if you're not doing a lot of listings, doing these free CMAs is a phenomenal uh, education for yourself. It makes you more confident in knowing the market. Matthew does seven CMAs in a neighborhood. How confident is he in the values of that neighborhood? Extremely confident. If he wants to go knock on those doors and just start talking to people about what's going on in that neighborhood, he is able to, if he happens to have a buyer come down the pipeline that wants to move in the area. All of these things that you offer while getting contact information that you're doing are not only building rapport and giving you a database and building a pipeline, they're also making you more of an expert. And when you're more of an expert, you're more confident and you're going to be better at your job and it all is going to uh, be a positive cycle in the right direction. So let's talk about your follow-up because we talked about this last time and I want to talk a little bit about that. So after you talk with somebody and you do get their contact information or you don't get their contact information, but you remember their address, you're doing some follow-up that has worked successfully as well, right? Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if you don't get their contact information, um, you can still have a great conversation with these people. And, you know, there's a lot of really nice people out there that don't want you calling them. So um, it's just something that like, you know, when I'm walking up to the door, like I kind of look around, you'll see like stickers or logos on the back of their cars that say like, you know, UNC Chapel Hill or, you know, different colleges or universities they went to, or maybe they have an Army, Navy or Marine sticker. And it kind of helps me when I get there to have conversation that isn't so like just about the open house. And, and when I have those conversations and I don't get contact information, it's easier for me to remember those people and what we talked about. So I'll usually like, I, I circle like their house on a map. And actually, I've, I usually <laughs> I print out like a little aerial view of the neighborhood. Awesome. And, like I, I like exit or circle, like depending on who I had a conversation with. And then I can go into the MLS and like see their names and stuff. And then I can just send them a little letter and talk about, you know, um, 
hey, it was great to meet you. Um, I appreciated the conversation. Thank you for telling me a little bit about your neighborhood or you know, whatever we talked about. And I've actually followed up with one person who we talked about. He was in the military and now he serves in the honor guard. Um, we had a great conversation about it. I have some family members that are in the military and I followed up with them. And that is one of the people who reached back out to me based off of the letter that I sent, but I didn't get their contact information. I just knew where they lived. So I sent a letter, told them, you know, hey, thanks for the conversation. And then they reached back out to me saying that they were looking to downsize. So that was something that, you know, just based off of a handwritten note and I didn't get their conversation or their, their contact information that I was able to reach back out and just kind of touch them one more time. And they were willing to give me a call. So, yeah. So here's the thing. And that was a conversation where you had a great conversation. You thanked him for his service. And in the letter, you said something about that as well. Yeah. Um, and it connected them to Matthew and it made that conversation, you know, something that was memorable, right. Then just somebody knocking on the door saying there was an open house. They got to know Matthew. Um, they got a little bit of a relationship they would not give him their contact information, but he's standing in front of their house. So he got their, probably their first name. He can go to tax yeah. records and grab it. He sent a handwritten note. Hey, you know, John and Sandy, it was great to talk with you. Thank you for taking the time when I came up to your door to spend a little bit of time with me. It was great meeting you and learning about you. Thank you again so much for your service. If you need anything, let me know. And they called him. So yeah. here's the thing, you know, if you do the follow-up, sometimes people are just not ready to make that decision in the moment, but you can still build that rapport and that follow-up is going to be key. And so Matthew and I were talking about no matter what, whether they give you contact information or not, and he uses that map, which I think is genius. You circle it so you can go back, make a little note, military, uh, you know, five kids, like whatever to jog your memory. I used to carry around, um, like a clipboard. And I think that's Matthew, what you said you do too. And I would have, um, I had the tax records printed out. That was easier for me. Cause I was just walking around a neighborhood and they would do it for like area per street. And so then I would have their names and I wouldn't say their names. Cause that would be creepy, but, um, I would just say, hi, who am I? And then they would usually confirm if it was them. Sometimes there was a renter in there. And then I would realize and I would write that down. But if I had a conversation, even if I didn't get the information, I'd make a couple notes so I could write a handwritten note and mail it to them because I had that information available to me. And, um, I just love that Matthew does that because oftentimes we start thinking about it as a numbers game. Okay, it's my 200 doors, my 200 doors, my open houses, but the follow-up is what we miss. And sometimes that's truly where the fortune is. And even if they don't call them right now, there's very likely somebody that will call him from one of those letters five months down the road because he was the one that actually took the time to knock on the door, which most realtors don't, and took the time to send a handwritten note after the fact, which most realtors don't. So we're just doing something different that they're not expecting because it doesn't happen very often. You know, that's the thing about the no solicitation solicitation neighborhoods, 99.9% .9 of agents probably won't go knock on the door. So they don't get a lot of door knocking realtors. You really don't have much competition. Um, and so that's the benefit of that. So Matthew, we have a few more minutes. So anything I didn't ask you that I should have, or anything that you want to share that has been just a huge aha for you, or that you believe that has attributed to your success, because having seven possible sellers that are strong options, opportunities in this market of low inventory in three months licensed is a very big deal because many experienced agents don't have a pipeline of seven sellers right now. And I know that because I talk to hundreds of them all the time. So it's a huge feat. It is a testament to your, you know, your discipline, your commitment, and your consistency, and kind of just getting out there and doing something, even when you're not an expert. And that's what is inspirational to me, because that means every single person watching this call now or later can do it too. Everybody hear that. Anybody watching this can do it too if they want to. And that is super exciting and empowering and inspiring to me. Um, but Matthew, what have we missed that we should share with the group? Yeah, I, I can just give a few like ideas that I that I think work, work best for me. Um, I've knocked all days of the week. I've knocked all hours of the day. Um, I think truthfully, Monday through Friday, before like three or four o'clock in the afternoon, your your contact rate is going to be really low um, just because everybody's at work. So I think, um, you know, getting people in the afternoons, even if you don't have to do 100 in the afternoon, you can do like 25 a day or something if you wanted to just hit, you know, half half a block or something and um, just probably probably better in the afternoons and then Saturdays. Um, I try not to knock anyone's house after six o'clock. I just feel like it's wrong. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really bother anyone at dinner or anything like that. Um, but I, I would say like 
you know, get out there and do it, take action. And um, even when times are hard, and I say times are hard because like I've knocked neighborhoods where it was just, the responses were brutal. And then at the end of the day, I got a listing like lead. So, you know, at the very last house, I was like, well, that was worth it, even though the past, you know, six hours was brutal, <laughs> but you know, it, it made sense and it worked out. So, you know, keep your head up, keep going. And the worst thing they can say is no, or, you know, get off my property, whatever. But, you know, that's, if they're rude, you don't want to work with them anyway. So you just keep on moving and, you know, contact people and, write them a letter if you don't get their contact information. So yeah. one last thing I wanted to say is that I didn't even really intend to do this. It just kind of happened. But one of the neighborhoods that I knocked on, um, I had an open house in the neighborhood on Sunday and I knocked doors Friday and Saturday. And the very last house that I knocked happened to be the president of the HOA. And they have a Facebook group where everyone in the neighborhood is members of this Facebook group. And he told me, he said, I knew you were here. I just didn't see you around. I was like, what, what do you mean? And he was like, well, they've been all over the Facebook group talking about this agent who's walking around and they posted some videos of you on their Facebook. And I was like, oh, well, just from the ring cameras. And they're like, yeah. And I said, well, well, hopefully I got my message across because you know you, you got to be polite to the cameras. I talk to every single camera that I, that I see because I have you a ring do? camera. Yes, I see it. <laughs> I see every one of them, they'll light up with two little like red dots and like, you know, they're watching, but they won't say anything. So I'll just say like, Hey, my name's Matt. Just stopping by to let you know there's an open house. You know, here's some information on it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I talked to every single one of them. So the HOA president knew that I was there. He knew what I was doing. And um, he actually ended up taking a picture of me with my flyer and posting it on the page and like wrote a little thing on me, like about it and said, um, and there's like 278 houses like that are a member of this Facebook page. So like once he posted it, like everybody saw it. So um, the open house that I had was like very successful. There was like 25 people that showed up just from that alone. So oh it was a great opportunity to meet people. And what I was going to say is that if you meet the president of the HOA or someone who's a member of the Facebook group, if they're really kind and they want to help you out, tell them to post a picture of you and your flyer on their page because it's going to get to everyone. <laughs> That's a man. Talk to the yeah. ring cameras. Yeah, talk to the ring cameras for sure. <laughs> They're watching you whether you talk to it or not. So you might as well say something, right? That's amazing. Oh my gosh. I love that. That's incredible. That's probably going to like make the local news. There's a realtor that talks to ring cameras in the neighborhoods. I can just see it now. And it's going to be every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that happens for your sake. The cool part about that is if you build that relationship, you could maybe go back to that, yeah. you know, president of the association and say, gosh, I love your neighborhood. Thanks for doing that. What great people. You know, I had 25, 30 people come to the open house. Hey, if you guys are ever doing a neighborhood event and you need a sponsor, I'd sure love to sponsor it. You know, if you want me to bring you a, a, a monthly uh, market report on your neighborhood that I can send to you and you can post in the group, hey, let me know. Like Absolutely. anything that you can come from service, um, now that you've built that rapport, go for it. Because that's a great farming opportunity that yeah. is kind of happening in a different way than normal. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were great people. I mean, I have their contact information and they're, they're buying a condo at the beach. So I was able to like ask questions about that. They already had an agent. So it was really yeah. just, a, you know, tell me about what you're doing and how's that working out. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, give me a call. <laughs> so, that's right. Um, that's right. That is amazing. I mean, here's the thing that I'm going to say as we wrap up perfect timing, we've got three minutes and I'll open it up for questions. It's a beautiful thing when you don't know what you don't know. It's a beautiful thing when you don't have your mind riddled with a bunch of distractions and limiting beliefs, isn't it? And I think that we all have the ability to kind of get away from that, even though we've been in business for a while. But when we've been in business for a while, we start to kind of get in our own thoughts and limiting beliefs and distractions. And I know this because when I started in leadership and I started, uh, you know, building the brokerage, I didn't know what I didn't know. I wasn't afraid of anything. I just went and did it and I had great success. And the longer I was in that role, the more my mind told me things wouldn't work and held me back because I had experience. And so if we can glean anything from a new agent, it is that, you know what, you don't have to overthink anything. Um, it, it's not necessary. And just doing the actions works. And if you're open to learning and kind 
kind of failing forward, you are going to have success. And that is so super exciting. Matthew, you have a bright future ahead of you. There is absolutely zero doubt in that. You've brought a ton of people inspiration and a lot of people that are going to be watching this. So I really appreciate it. And before we leave, does anybody have a question, a comment or anything that they want to share? There's a ton of people watching the live stream, but I don't see any comments. Thanks, you guys watching live in EXP Family Tree. Remember, this is live streamed and we'll stay there forever. So you guys, if you have somebody that you've brought to EXP or somebody on your team or a friend or a colleague, and you want them to see this for their own inspiration, tag them in the live stream under uh, this uh, live stream in EXP Family Tree. Or if they're not at EXP and you still want to bless them with this information, all you got to do is grab it from my YouTube channel. It'll be there later on today and you can just share it with anybody. Um, but any questions or comments? I mean, we've had some great comments in the chats, Matthew, but. Just that you're doing a really awesome job, Matthew. That's awesome. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Good for you, buddy. Jen, by the way, is not that old in real estate herself and is crushing it. Uh, so uh, she knows how hard work pays off when you're new in real estate too. And she does a lot of the things we're talking about yeah. today. That's awesome. Just your first six months, you doing this, so you're going to be just fine. Agents who are willing to do what other agents aren't willing to do are the ones that kick ass and you'll have consistency. Like the first six months, you may want to quit and cry, but I'm telling you after that, it's just going to snowball and you're going to set yourself up for years of clients. I promise you. Yeah. So I'm extremely true. excited for the potential that I'm, I'm building now. So it's, it's very, um, Oh, it's happening. It's not potential. It's happening. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. He doesn't know yet, but you know, we're going to get you back on Matthew in six months and see how many houses you've listed and sold. Cause that's going to be a cool follow-up conversation. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys for joining. It was great to see a lot of your faces today. I appreciate you being here. We've got some really great sessions coming up in August. We just posted it. So join us if you can. Um, and otherwise, of course, if you need anything, just work chat me or a lot of you know how to reach me outside of that as well. Matthew, proud of you, excited for you. Keep in touch uh, with me and you know we will. And then we'll continue to share some of your successes so you can impact others because that's a really big blessing. And I appreciate you taking the time to do it today. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. See you soon.